Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Zebu Nation Plays Endless Space 2. This is episode 4 of the United Empire and our friendly and peaceful attempt to dominate the galaxy. Uh, last we left off we got some issues here. We got the remnants of a pirate fleet hanging out in our system. We had a battle with these dudes, these jokers. And they barely survived, as did our little patrol ship here. So we're going to split this guy off into his own little fleet, because we can't afford to repair him. And we're just going to take our two pioneer ships, our newly created uh, sort of hybrid scout ships and uh, attack ships. And we'll just send them after the pirates, take them out, take out this last prowler. Um... Power to shields, turtle, I don't know, I guess we'll just do the turtle. We gotta look at our cards and we gotta, um, cause these things are, these things that you can do in battle are, are called cards, and you can swap them in and swap them out of your hand before battles, and, uh, you know, use those in the battles so I gotta take a look and see if I have any other cards I probably don't because I haven't researched any military technology yet but anyway that's what you do with those so the turtle formation just goes straight at the enemy and we'll do that so they're doing long range bonus so they're gonna try to you know evade us for as long as possible they, they can't retreat because if you retreat, you lose 60% of your health automatically, and they don't have 60% of their health available. So, uh, here we are warping in to their side, wherever they were at in our solar system. Lock s foils in attack formation and all that jazz. Popping up our little turrets there, we're going to take a few shots at them. It shouldn't take long to take these guys out. Shields have recharged a little bit, but I don't think it's going to matter much. Two ships hammering away at them. <laughs> I do like these battle animations. I don't know if everyone oh, just exploded off camera there. There he goes. That was a short battle, as it should have been. I like these battle animations. I like watching them most of the time. You know, there's some times where I just, I don't care and I'll, uh, I'll just simulate the battle, I guess. I mean, you simulate them anyway. But, I don't know. It's fun to see the little battle anim animations, especially when you get start to get bigger fleets involved and you have, you know, like six or eight or ten ships all flying around in different formations and doing different maneuvers. It's kind of cool to watch. And hopefully we'll get to that point in our save. So there we go. The pirate situation has been handled. So now we can uh, go back to these guys. They're not really damaged at all. Uh, let's see. I guess I can just send them down here to Gemini. Scout some ships down there in Gemini. And I can send my other patrol ship over here to Mira. Scout. Because uh, I still have to... Um, I still have to scan the anomalies here for this hidden rebel situation. I have five more anomalies there. And then there's also another set of anomalies for the Academy. I need to scan one more atmospheric curiosity. So I already have four or five. So that, that needs to be our top priority so we can get access to the Academy. And then we'll be able to get more and more of our cool little uh, hero dudes. So that'll be good. We need some fleet heroes to help bolster our fleets. Especially at this young um, age that we're in where we don't have a lot of regular fleets or regular ships or even really many ships that can do attacking much at all. Ooh, here we go. I ended the turn and now we've got a new election. So who do we give our support to? We got six political parties here the industrialists the militarists religious ecologists scientists and pacifists as you know we've been sort of gearing towards the pacifists a little bit just so we can help encourage that other alien species to join our wonderful wonderful uh, empire here but 
The industrialists are the strongest faction. They have our hero, Dmitry Lenko, in their corner. So if we give them our official support, um, they're pretty much sure to win. And right now, we have some very helpful industrialists industrialist laws in place that are helping you know our emerging economy so we're gonna keep our support behind the industrialists just to uh, you know keep the status quo as it were because right now the status quo is very helpful for, for us so here's the voting breakdown so we have two planets each one gets a representative there four total representatives and then, who are the other representatives? Are there two per planet? Pictor, system, one of one. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Anyway, let's go to the election here. Election results. Pacifist ecologists are, have been established as political parties. Okay. Hmm. I didn't. I didn't really get a good uh, idea of what happened there. So, did the pacifists win the election? The law, right thing rule, has been activated in your empire. It's a pacifist law. A modern galactic government will largely react to the desire of its citizens by tying pay and perks to peaceful behavior and the promotion of positive and friendly relations. A virtuous circle is created whereby peaceful activity is rewarded and thereby self-enforced. The more open and frictionless personal, national, and international relations are, the happier and more productive the populace becomes. Okay. The law is automatically activated when a political party is in power. So, the pacifists came through with a uh, stunning election result here. Yeah, they beat out leading political parties now. The ecologists and the pacifists. Wow. Not real happy about that. I threw my support behind the industrialists. And they managed to lose. Not happy about that. Look at that. There's four political parties basically ruling the Senate. <clears throat> Alright, so we need... Oh my gosh. Um... Larger host bill. We don't need that. Toys for boys. We don't need that. My precious. Plus one resources generated on luxury deposits. Plus 10% dust on system per luxury resources. We don't have a ton of luxury resources. We do have the deciduous trees. So that could help us out maybe. Make love not war. Plus 20 happiness per alliance system. Plus 20 happiness per peace on system. Well right now we're at peace with everybody. So that's fine for our happiness the green fertility bill from the ecologists will give us more food which I guess will help our colonies grow cool copies clause plus two food per person on planet per population on planet minus 25 luxury costs for increasing population growth rates hmm I don't know about that <clears throat> so the super tax law will tax everybody, you know, get us dust, but that's too big of a hit to approval. So we don't want that. We don't want to ruin their happiness. Uh, we don't really need larger hosts right now to strengthen our defensive systems, you know, basically give us more military manpower. Don't necessarily need that. The toys for boys don't need to reduce our science. My precious... That's a possibility. It's got, um, you know, it will cost us basically influence in upkeeps because it's the upkeep cost is one influence per population, which is kind of high. Uh, it's not as high as Make Love Not War. It's just the same as the fertility bill. 
So I think we'll enact my precious. The development of natural resources often goes hand in hand with pollution, over exploitation and scarcity. This series of laws ensures that resources are used in a way that guarantees the highest standards of quality and sustainability while reducing waste and inventory shrinkage. So the effects will be plus one generation on luxury resources, plus 10% dust on systems per luxury resource. So all of the systems that we're looking at colonizing have luxury resources, so this could help us out. Okay. So, so yeah, we've lost our industrialist laws that were helping us grow our colonies and helping us uh, you know increase our industrial ability so I'm not happy about that hmm anyway let's go back to the screen here let's send our ships on the way you know taking a little swipe a side hit there from uh, political uprising well not a political uprising but just a just a surprise election result. All right, so let's go to this scout down here. Let's scan some anomalies. What do we got? We got three anomalies left. There's an atmospheric curiosity, so that should get us. This should be our last one that we need to scan. All right, expedition successful on Mira One. Uh, plus fifty empire dust as loot. That's helpful. But there we go. We've, create, we've completed the cooperative quest, Rumors of an Academy. Now we finished in second place. We got the Steak Knives. An Unknown Empire finished first. So we got 60 Influence and 30 Hyperion, which is cool, I guess. I would have preferred to finish first. Uh, let's see, let's see. We read all this before in a previous episode cross-referencing signal information from known hero movement indicates the academy is likely one of three systems it's time to find out exactly where it is and meet the puissant being who founded it agents ages ago hmm not familiar with that word puissant hmm. it must be a compliment <laughs> we'll look that up later on and figure that out all right so we got another quest find the academy uh explore three systems with a fleet in order to find the academy all right is it a certain three system oh gosh So it's these three unknown systems out here. We have to send a fleet like... I don't even know if we have a fleet that can reach that because it it appears that our our galactic or our uh, systems map ends right here in this system. We're going to have to check this place out up here, but it, it looks like we're going to have to wait. Excuse me. We're going to wait until we get warp drive to be able to go out there into the center of the galaxy so that's gonna take us quite a while to do that I don't know or we're gonna have to change uh, how we're researching things so anyway either way oh dang it I forgot to set my timer so let's do that right now it's always the fun part of an episode is when will he remember uh, let's see this when will he remember his password to his phone number one and number two when will he remember to set the timer so there we go clock timer that's not a timer that's a timer all right 30 minutes on the clock let's go uh let me see here anything else we want to do not particularly what's this okay that's our new our new challenge. Um, go back to this guy down here. Can we scan another anomaly? We can. So that's good. We got two of our probes ready. All right. So let's scan this subterranean curiosity on Mira 3. Was successful. Titanium reserves 
spotted on the planet, and we get plus five titanium loot, so that's good. All right, now we can end the turn. We only have three more to go before we finish chapter one of our hidden rebel objectives. Okay, our relationships have gone from amicable to friendly with the Harishems. We're getting closer. You have access to advanced interactions with this minor civilization, and they provide you with most of their resources. Rock on. And our, we got our colony in Gemini ready to go. So let's take a look at that. So things are just popping off here at the moment. So we have another colonizable planet here in Gemini 4. It's barren planet, so we're going to wait for a while before we colonize that one. And we don't have any specializations available. System management scan. Ooh, that's crazy. Never clicked on that before. Trade efficiency. Science. So if we can colonize some of these planets, this is, you know, the benefits we'll get. So Gemini 2 is the most well-rounded planet. That's why we colonized it, because it actually has food growth available. Unlike Gemini 1 or Gemini 3, you get no food. Even Gemini 4, you get no food. So this is really the only viable place to start a colony. But later in the game, these are going to be important. You know, Gemini 1 and three because they can get us huge amounts of science and production so that'll be helpful we'll go back to that so we need to um we need to start building stuff here we'll start the way we usually start off which is a drone network cerebral reality uh xeno industry and maybe we'll put xeno industry first so not a lot of production here. There's only three production on Gemini 2, so it's going to take us a while to build these networks. Um, that's about all we need to do for that. All right. So we'll get rid of that. We need some specializations, which I, I think we have to research some technology to get those specializations. Uh, we have no governor here, you know, no hero to appoint as governor so we'll have to do that system representatives we don't quite know yet looks like they're heading towards the industrialist so that could give us another industrialist representative in the senate and then we can get our industrialist laws back you know so we can work the politics that way they're mostly content people uh, they're imperialists is currently the only population there so all right so that's a good system good place to start off let's go back here move our ships around all right so we got these guys here so now we can scan for anomalies we only need three more and there's three more in this system so we should be able to do that first scan successful your analysis of life form was successful. Uh, more deciduous trees. This is very good for the future of our colonies because we'll be able to improve our colonies using deciduous trees and that will let them uh, generate more dust when they go up to a, a higher level. So like, you know, there's there are a lot of different things you have to do with colonies and one of them is improve them. Uh oh, we got a new objective here. Uh, there are ruins in this system, old enough and sophisticated enough that they must have come from the endless. There are machines within machines, some of which are still running, and others are so alien that you're not sure how to tell if they're running or not. It will take time to investigate properly, that is, if you don't just take the dust and run. So if we in investigate, we'll spend some of our science, so minus five science for ten turns, uh, it will increase the scientist party ideology and you have an 80 percent chance to discover something that's a pretty good percent chance for not a lot of science investment uh what are we what are we making per turn in science uh, i can't tell but i'm pretty sure it's more than plus five or on the other hand you can just sort of smash the computers and take the dust 
Uh, so you get plus 75% plus 75 dust on the Empire for one turn and you'll increase the militarist. So that's kind of that's very very short range thinking right there just grabbing the loot and running. So we're going to investigate send some scientists down to figure out what what these ancient machines are all about. So there we go. I think that's that's a good a good way to go about it. So then we'll scan the next anom anomaly. Gemini 2 is turning out to be a pretty cool place. Hyperium has been uh, found after our successful analysis of subterranean anomaly so you got the Hyperium resource and plus five Hyperium loot so that's very good uh oh solo quest started the ripple effect a preliminary exploration of the ocean planet reveals only one thing a screaming band of Hisho fighters who fire off an opening salvo of rockets before even attempting communication. Your repeated warning broadcasts do nothing to slow their advance. Your ships are entering defensive formation even as you give the command time to fight for your life. The Hishu have no interest in dialogue. They're going to need to be eliminated. So we have a battle here at Gemini 2. Our reward will be 50 Hyperium. And here we go, the Battle of Gemini 2 Prowlers. 18 attack, 30, 73 defense against our two pioneer ships, which are 34 attack, 69 defense. So they have the advantage in defense. We have a significant advantage in attack. So let's take these boys out. We'll use our turtle attack against the shield wall. So they're going to come in at short range. And I guess we'll be at short range too, so it's... It should be an interesting battle here. Battle of Gemini. Here come their prowlers warping in. So we're not exactly sure who these guys are. If they're just pirates or mercenaries or just some weird band of zealots who want to be left alone. And we uh, encroached on their space. But either way, we're going to start battling. Looks like they've got machine guns and that's about it. So we should have the edge in firepower. And at long range as well we should have a pretty significant advantage. Although right now it looks like we're firing kind of at close range. They do have shields which are absorbing our lasers a little bit. Uh, right now we're pretty even in terms of uh, who's winning, who's losing. I don't know if we're yellow or blue, honestly. Alright, so we're blue. Um, look at the ships here. Where are the hit points? That ship hasn't been hit at all. That ship's lost a little bit of health. Well, it's lost signif significant left us about uh, 500, 600 health off of that ship. Now how about theirs? That one's lost about uh, 900. And that one's lost about 1,000. So we're damaging both of their ships. They're focusing on one of our ships. It's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. It's going to probably be another draw. Here's the time signature here. We're already past the three quarters point in the battle. I don't think I don't think they're gonna lose either ship and neither are we. Well, our first pioneer ship is getting close. It's only got 396 hit points left. It looks like it's gonna survive to the end of the battle ends in a draw hmm so as you can see here one of our pioneer ships was heavily damaged one not damaged at all and both of their ships were heavily damaged okay I guess we could attack them again and finish them off it will probably lose one of our ships can we repair it? We can repair it. 398 dust. 
to repair that ship. That is quite a cost. Might not be worth it, if I'm honest with you. So we'll just attack these guys, and instead of the turtle, we'll do this, the revive and rebuild, plus 15 dust gained for each ship lost, because we're probably going to lose a ship, so at least we'll get something out of it. So there we go, we'll fight. So shield wall, plus 25% short range defensive bonus. We're going to go a little bit of a long range strategy here. Use our laser cannons to our advantage, hopefully. So here we are warping back in to fight these guys again. And here's deploying the laser cannons. Let's blast these suckers. So as you can see now, we have a significant advantage here. We're all the way there in the blue. Hopefully we can blow up their ships before they blow up our one ship. 121 health left on that guy. 1540. Looks like they're... Yeah, they're continuing to fire at the same dude. So he's, he's not long for this world. There he goes. We just lost a ship. But we should be able to take out their two ships here pretty soon. 137 left on that guy. We should be able to take these guys out with our remaining ship. I hope. I hope. We got now 1,200 hit points versus 151 and 58. Um, we could check out the overview here and see what see the marks. So we're we're both firing fighting at long ranges. You can see the the path that we're taking. So that's kind of a cool way to see what all is going on. And go back to the auto camera. So we got the decisive victory. Looks like we missed blowing up both of those ships. That's cool. We lost one pioneer ship. They lost two prowlers. But we got a lot of loot and rewards for this. Figure that out. So we got 50 Hyperium and we added some dust from our destroyed ship. So that's fine. So at this point, you know, we want to be stockpiling dust just for the late. The mid game is when you start losing a lot of dust. Because you'll have a bunch of new buildings that you've built, new colonies that need resources, you're building new ships and all that kind of stuff. And your dust supplies get uh, get dwindled pretty quickly. Alright, so... <laughs> Let's keep scanning, I guess. Now that all the fighting is over, there's one last anomaly to scan. We'll do that. Successful expedition on Gemini... Four. This is new. I've never seen this screen before. Your analysis of atmospheric anomaly on planet Gemini 4 was successful. A strong magnetic field anomaly. So we figured that out about the planet. Oh, that's not good. It's a detrimental anomaly that gives you minus one science, minus one production, and minus ten happiness. That's no good. But we got a new battle tactic out of this we discovered. Improves your morale bonus which increases your damage when enemy has fewer active flotillas. Okay. It's not going to help us out short range or in the short term, but it will help us out long term. So here we go. We've completed our solo quest of the Hidden Rebellion Part 1. Success. Your exploratory fleet found and crushed the rebellion. Not much worth not much was worth keeping. But the records did provide some interesting insights. The biggest shock, however, was the identity of the rebel leader. Your sister, Lena, wasn't blessed with only child Victoria. She had another identical twin, Julinka. So I'm assuming Julinka was the rebel leader. All right. So we've acquired the daily slogan improvement. So it'll help us plus 25 
plus 20% food on outpost transfers. So those little shuttles that go between our outposts are going to have plus 20% more food now. So that'll help our colonies grow. Here we go, Hidden Rebellion Part 2. Julinka, the traitor, refuses to speak. She's too young to be the true mastermind behind the rebellion. But if that individual's identity... Oh, but of that individual's identity, there is no clue. Take that as a sentence. Uh, you will not sanction any violence against your sister's blood, as so she languishes, languishes in solitary confinement in the deepest depths of your Inquisitor's redoubt. Lena claims to have never laid eyes upon the girl, claims she must have been uh, rustled away at birth and raised by those who plotted against the Empire. Of her twin, Victoria, there is no sign. The, the girl... Of her twin, Victoria, there is no sign. The girl going to ground, as soon as she heard the news, she wasn't a lone child. Out of shock or something more you don't know, you need time to untangle this dark web. Ooh, the plot thickens. The rebellion might be no more, but the fact that it ever existed in the first place haunts your days and disturbs your nights. Who can you really trust? Every day you grow a little older, a little closer to the day you will no longer be able to lead this great empire. You decide now is the time to name the Emperor Elect and consolidate your power while you still hold it. The three candidates are obvious. First Protector Hadri Lenko, stalwart bodyguard for many years and a hero among the Empire Hawks. Lena Zalvis, your own flesh and blood sister, a woman who despite her smoldering anger would make an iron leader and keep a Zelvis on the throne. Or should it be Petra Mandzukic, the brilliant head of advanced research, a woman who pioneers several chilling technologies that have transformed your army's fortunes, someone who could grasp the opportunities of a new star-faring era. The choice is not easy. Peace of mind is hard to find. Until you learn the identity of the rebellion ringleader, though, you will have no real peace. It could be one of them, but choose you must. Hmm. So build a ship of at least 60 offensive power for Hadri. Get the reward of Hadri Lenko. Lena, produce 99 dust per turn. Reward of Lena. Interesting. Now we're already producing 74 dust per turn. Or Petra. We'd have to produce 115 science per turn on our empire. I don't... What are we producing currently on our empire? We're producing 90 science per turn. So we're close on a couple of these. Um, we're not anywhere near producing a ship of 60 offensive power. Um, huh. See, right now all signs point to Lena as the uh, the traitor. Honestly, it's her her daughter, but that could be like you know the old plot twist, right? Where you take the most obvious thing and and turn it around. So it could be Hadri, but he seems like a pretty loyal dude. So I'm thinking that the traitor might be this weird Petra person, because I think she's related to the previous the previous emperor if i remember or at least the family that last opposed us that name sounds familiar what's her name manzukic that that name sounds familiar so i'm gonna go with lena uh we'll keep the empire in the family and uh yeah do that so now that'll allow us for the next couple of Science innovations will focus on industry and the economy and help us uh, boost that dust production. So there we go. That's our plan. Go for the dust and production. Uh, now let's check out the Mira over here. Okay. So we're pretty close to having them join the Empire. We can either spend some more praise or we can try to assist them. Let's see what they want. 
For years, isolated settlements of the Harishims have suffered at the hands of a predatory band operating out of the Kazika cleft. They are not without a sense of humor, though. Despite pillaging hardware, fuel, foodstuffs, and domesticated animals, the pirates often grace their captive victims with a theatrical show before making off of their stolen goods. Plays, musical, even slapstick comedies have been known to be performed, and they have a reputation as excellent players. Now, however, their luck has ran out as they happen to rob kin of one of the Harishim's leadership. It's a somewhat of a shame to help shut down this merry band of thieves, but their actions are creating hardships for many of the fringes of the Harishim society. Plus, of course, your interest is not entirely motivated by concern for others. So if we destroy the mercenary fleet in a nearby system, we'll obtain their minor citizenship. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so they have three pincers, 44 and 79. They're kind of, uh, hmm. Yeah, they are kind of tough compared to what we've got. So we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to work on our navy a little bit. In the meantime, I think we can scan an anomaly up here, right? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Can these guys scan? No, they can't scan. Take a look at the system. I thought there was an anomaly left in this system. There is down here. But we must not have any probes left on this patrol ship. So these guys are hanging out in Pegasus. That's not good for us. Oops, what's this? More Reavers. Okay. Alright, so the Reavers are heading towards this system. So the way you avoid combat in uh, this game is you have to leave the system before the enemies get there and set up shops. So we're going to head back home. So basically we're just going to cross each other in hyperspace here. And you don't fight if you meet each other in hyperspace. Only if you meet each other in a system. So we don't have to worry about that. We do have to worry about these guys coming down here from Pegasus and ruining our day. So... Uh, we got one turn for Galactic Commodities. That'll give us the Marketplace and uh, should help our dust production there. So what we need to do here, we're going to build another Pioneer ship and then, uh, and then we're going to uh, work on our military technology a little bit. So we'll end that turn real quick. Got a lot of things popping off all of a sudden. We need to explore those systems to find the the academy. I don't think that's going to work, but anyway. Um, you know, it's going to take us a while to do that. All right, all right, all right. Next turn, let's see what's happening here. Don't know where those mercenaries went because we don't have any ships in the area. Hopefully they didn't go to Pictor. That would kind of ruin our day. But yeah, I'll send these jokers. I mean, I want to do more exploring. Okay, so there they are. I can see them on the map because they're a special fleet. So they're moving that way. So that's that's good. Uh, that'll give us time to explore some of this area down here with our other ships. So there we go. Let's move our ships along. Hello? You're not moving. There we go. So I gotta see what's in these systems. There might be some more planets in this system. I mean, there's definitely at least two more systems. But, you know, we got so much to do now. We gotta explore. We gotta build ships. We gotta build dust production. All kinds of things. So let's take a look at our uh, breakdowns here. So we built the Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. Uh, that will increase our production, but it's reduced our dust production by four, so that's no good. We're going to have a pioneer ship coming out pretty soon, so that's good. Economy and trade. So we got a new challenge. Uh, 
be the first to control at least four star systems in the same constellation. Another empire achieved this deed already. All right, so we can't do that. Get rid of that. Oh, wait, we need... Uh, we need new science. So we've just completed the galactic commodities. Now we've got some choices here. Neural robotics, which will grant... Um, the Luxuries Lottery, pre Predictive Logistics, which will improve our industry, and Industrial Zones. So that's definitely an industrial one. Planetary Landscaping will help us produce more food. Of course, the Military and Fusion. Or Xenobiology. I don't think we want any of those. So I'm going to go to the Science screen itself. Take a look. So we want either some kind of Military... Um, the ubiquitous surveillance will give us the big data shipyards, which, which helps us produce better ships. So that's definitely a possibility. Or impactless sites will help us. Uh, we just, we just got that, right? Yeah, we just got, no, we didn't. We just got, uh intergalactic commodities hmm hmm mineral robotics extreme atmospherics um there's just so many things to look at in this dang game it's hard to choose sometimes astro finance uh, might be the way to go system improvements plus three dust per person on planets with luxury deposits in the colonial exchange yeah I think we'll go with um... all right all right we don't want to do that second we want to do that first so we want to do astro finance first and then maybe you d ubiquitous surveillance second. Can we do third? Oh, yeah, we can pick our technologies in order. I didn't realize that. I've never done that before. So we're going to do that. That'll that'll help us speed this process along. So first we're going to go with Astro Finance, which will help us improve our dust production. Then we're going to go with ubiquitous surveillance that will help our military. And then we'll go with impactless sites, which will, again, help our economy and our marketplace and that kind of stuff so there we go we'll end that back out of this let's see what's going on here marketplace military ship prices have decreased so we now have access to the marketplace let's take a look at this marketplace so here you can buy different things you can buy strategic resources like titanium hyperium antimatter admantian uh, we don't really need any of this stuff. And as you can see, there are prices that go up and down. Uh, here's our list of prices. So if we need dust and we need to like buy stuff, we can sell some of our strategic resources, particularly Hyperium. We got a lot of that. And it looks like the price has gone up on that recently. Now to deal with those pirates... oh. All right, so we need impactless sites in order to access ships and heroes. All right, that's no good. So again, if we wanted to buy or sell luxury items, we could do that right now. What We only have the one luxury, which is the deciduous trees. We don't want to sell those. But, you know, if we needed more luxuries, we could buy them. Prices are going up on the luxury market. Um, maybe I should do the impactless sites first. After all, then I could get access to the ships. I wouldn't have to build ships. I could just buy the ships. Um, four turns for Astro Finance. Oop. Well, there's the timer. That flew by. That went really quick. So I guess we'll figure out that for next time. What do we want to do there? Do we want to uh, 
focus on buying the ships, use up some of that dust we've saved. I don't know if that sounds like a great idea long term. Short term, it sounds like a really good idea, but we'll figure that out next time. So until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.